Hey everybody, it's Mr. N here. We are going to do this next lesson on angle side angle and angle angle side. And then we're going to summarize all the ones that we have talked about to prove triangles congruent. So let's start off with this first one over here. We've got the angle side angle ASA congruence theorem. So if two angles and the included side of one triangle are congruent to two angles and the included side of the other, then the two triangles are congruent. Now we've already talked about side angle side, but this one is angle side angle where the side is in between the two angles. So if here's angle C, that's congruent to angle F, and then angle A to D, then over here, this is the included side, the one that's between them, it's sandwiched in between. So this will help us to prove triangles congruence as long as we can show that the corresponding angles, then the included side, will be congruent. All right, then we've got another one called the angle-angle-side. Now, notice this one, nothing sandwiched in between. Here's angle A, there's angle D. Then the next angle, consecutive, immediate past that, and then the side. Notice the side is not in between the two angles. Now, you could you have done it angle-angle-side using side AB, if you knew AB was congruent to DE? Sure, that's still angle-angle-side. It's the other way around, though. Angle-angle-side this way angle, angle, side. So either way will work as long as the this one, the angle, the side is not in between the two angles. That would be angle, side, angle. All right, so here is a quick summary of all the ones we've talked about. We've talked about side, angle, side. We've talked about side, side, side. We've talked about angle side angle and we've talked about angle angle side and then we did hypotenuse leg okay now here are all the ones we've talked about and then we've got these additional right here right triangle ones that we can use so in summary oops let's use the pen in summary they're all up here we have side 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 angle side, angle side angle, angle angle side, and then we have the right triangle ones, HL, HA, LL, and LA. LL means leg leg, LA means leg acute, HA is hypotenuse acute, and HL is hypotenuse leg. Now the one that we cannot use is side side angle. Now I know a lot of you like to say the other way around, ASS, same thing. The side side angle one we cannot use. We cannot use it for the reason I showed you in the previous lesson in that you can make two various, two different triangles where I can set it up that this is congruent to that, this angle of the big triangle like this is congruent to that angle of the little triangle. And then this side, obviously, would be congruent to both. But notice over here, these are two different triangles. So a situation can be made where you have that, and that's why we cannot use side-side angle to prove triangles congruent. These are the ones we are going to be using. That's the ones I want you to focus on. So let's do a few examples. Okay, taking a look here. It says, decide whether enough information is given to prove that the triangles are congruent. If so, state which theorem you would use. Over here, this angle, congruent to that one. And then another one here, and then the side right there. So angle, angle, then a side. Angle, angle, then a side. So yes, and it's by angle, angle, side. All right, over here, I've got an angle, and then I've got two sides. So two sides and an angle. Over here, I've got this included angle, so no, there's a, those are completely different. Over here, I've got this angle, side, and an angle. So one tick mark, the side to two tick marks. So yes, right, right away you could say by angle, side, angle. Is there any other way you can do it? Let's take a look. Let me erase some of this stuff so we could see it again a little bit clearer. And let's see. Let's see. All right. If I say this side, then this angle, this side, this angle, then the side that has two tick marks. So that'll work also, and that's by side, angle, side. So either way, this would work. All right, let's take a look at these proofs right here. 
Okay, I'm given that PS is parallel to RT, so these right here are parallel, and PQ is congruent to TQ. So let me put that all in my statements and my reasons. Okay, so first step is the given. PS is parallel to RT. PQ is congruent to TQ. Okay, this is my given. Step two, let's take a look. I can just go for the vertical angle one. Let's see if that helps me. Vertical angles, if I show that those are congruent, and now I've got a side and an angle, all I need is another angle. And I could do angle, angle, side, or angle, side, angle. Um, that's probably the route I'm going to have to take. So take a look at how we can do another angle. Since these two, I'm going to put them in blue, are parallel, this could be a transversal, or the other one can be a transversal. Either way, now, if I chose this as my transversal, these are alternate interior, right there. So then I would end up with angle, side, angle. Now, if I didn't want to do that one, let's see if I could do it the other way, just, just to see if it'll work any other way. So let's see if I, these are parallel, and if I chose this as my transversal, this would make these alternate interior, and I knew these were congruent, and then I would have angle to angle to side, angle, angle, side. So either way would have worked on this one. Either way would have worked. All right, so let's write these out in the, our steps. We'll go with that first method, since that was the first one I showed you guys. Let's do it that way. So we know this is parallel to this. So there's my transversal, and this angle right in here will be congruent to that one. So we will say angle PQS, step two angle PQS, is congruent to angle. Now, since I named it starting with the P, I'm going to name this one TQR, TQR, and those are vertical angles. And we know vertical angles are all congruent. So then I know that this is parallel to this, so that means... Angle P will be congruent to angle T. So angle P is congruent to angle T. And this is by alternate interior angles. And now I'm done. Step four, triangle PSQ is congruent to triangle TRQ. And the reasoning for that would be by angle side angle. All right, let's see if we could do the next one. What I suggest is maybe you pause it, you try to do it, and see if you can get the same result I, I get here. All right, so here's my statements. There's my reasons. Let's put in what we know. BD bisects angle ADC, and BD is perpendicular. Okay, so it bisects it here. So step one, BD bisects angle ADC. This is my given, and BD is perpendicular to AC. Okay, step two. Let's see what we can do. Over here, well, I know that DB is congruent to DB, and that's reflexive. I always go for that reflexive one first because most of the time it's going to be useful. All right, well, if this bisects, a, <clears throat> if this bisects the angle... We know that angle, and they put it in here, ADB is congruent to angle CDB, and this is by definition of angle bisector. All right, so now I did this is congruent to that. Maybe I shouldn't color them in because it's looking a little weird. So let's erase that. Oops, not letting me erase it now. Good old software. Let's see if we can undo those. There we go. Okay, so I will say that this is congruent to that. Okay, and then if this is perpendicular, then these are right angles in here, right? So we can say that since DB is perpendicular to AC, angle ABD is congruent to angle CBD 
because definition of, or we'll say perpendicular lines, let's do this instead, use the theorem instead of a definition, we're going to say perpendicular lines form, con form congruent right angles. Okay, that's putting the definition of perpendicular and the definition of right angle together. Perpendicular lines form congruent right angles. So we know that these are congruent. Now I can say, step five, angle side angle. Angle, uh, or triangle, sorry. Triangle ABC is congruent to triangle CBD by angle side angle. Okay, so the question is, could you have done it with a right triangle proof? Yes, you could have. Instead of doing it the way I did, let me erase some things here and see if it'll let me. Well, it's going to let me erase some of them, but not all of them. What you could have done is, since this is a right angle, you could say triangle ABC and triangle CBA are right triangles. Okay, by definition of right triangle. Because right triangle has to have a right angle, and it does. Because we, this is where you would say it, right after this point. So then you would conclude this by saying triangle ABD is congruent to triangle CBD. And then you could say here, since you have this leg and that acute angle, it would be leg acute angle. So let's move on to the next page, and we've got a couple more proofs that we could do here. All right, for this first one, again, I'm going to write in my statements and my reasons. Okay, so over here, BC, they tell me is congruent to ED. Then they tell me AB is congruent to FE. So we have this part right here. And then they tell me AD is congruent to uh, FC. And i got to prove that the triangle over here, ABD, is congruent to the triangle FEC. So i got to prove those two triangles. Well, I seems to be missing something. So I'm going to put all this in right here in my givens. And I won't be able to fit it in right here. So you can write it in, but I just didn't leave myself enough room. So I'm just going to put that arrow... Put in all your givens. Here's what I'm gonna, here's the trick that we're going to do to this. We're going to say that CD is congruent to CD, and this is a reflexive step. Okay. So now look, if I say BC, I'm going to need four tick marks there. Sorry. Now I can say that CD plus BC is going to be the whole BD. So we'll do this. We'll say BD is BC plus CD. In the same note, I'm going to say that EC is the same as ED plus DC. And this was segment addition postulate. Okay, so now I know that BC and ED are the same thing, right? So BC and ED are the same thing, so I can substitute it right there. BD is equal to ED plus CD, and this was substitution. But then I'm going to say that this right here, let me highlight it for you guys, um, right here is the same as that. It's pretty much the same thing. Well, it is the same thing, just the letters. I wrote them a little bit different. So that means in step five, we're going to say that BD is equal to EC. And this was transitive. Okay, so now that I know that, I can say that segment BD congruent to segment EC by definition of congruent, which now tells me that since this is equal to the other one right there, 
triangle ABD is congruent to triangle FEC, and this is by side, side, side. All right, let's take a look at this last proof that we're going to do. We'll put our statements here, and then we'll put our reasons. All right, let's take a look here. We've got PS congruent to RS, and SQ is perpendicular, okay? Almost like the last proof we did, but and then we need to prove that these two triangles are congruent right in here. It's very similar to the one we did on the other page. All right, right away, since this is perpendicular, let's go ahead, though, before we even do that, put in our givens, step one. Uh, PS is congruent to RS, SQ, perpendicular to PR. This was our given. And then, of course, let's do the one we always do right away. Let's do a different color, though. Let's do the one we always do right away. SQ, congruent oops, to SQ by reflexive. All right. Now that I have that... I cannot, in this one, say side, side, angle. Do you understand that I cannot say side, side, angle? Because that's not a way to prove something. However, I can use a right triangle one and say hypotenuse and the leg. Okay, so, but first I have to indicate that it's a right triangle. Since it's perpendicular, that means... Before I, I, know, I can see that it's a right triangle, but I have to write it down. And the reasoning for that is since it's perpendicular. So that means angle S, Q, P, and angle S, Q, R are right angles. And this is by definition of perpendicular. Okay? I don't even have to say they're congruent at this point because I don't need that. Now, since they're right angles, I can say that triangle PQS and triangle RQS are right triangles, and this is by definition of right triangle. They have to have one right angle. And now that I know that it's a right triangle, I have to say it's a right triangle before I use a right triangle congruence theorem. Okay, so that's why I had to go through and say that it's a trite triangle. Once I do that, then I can use LL, HA, HL, and uh, LA, either one of those. But you have to first tell me that it's a right triangle. And so now I did. I told you we have the two right triangles. Now I can say triangle the way they want me to say it here, PSQ is congruent to triangle RSQ, and this is by hypotenuse, and then this is a leg. All right, so hopefully this helped. Um, uh, I know some of these proofs can get a little tricky, but uh, triangle proofs are typically ones that you uh, usually get a little bit better than the other ones, so hopefully that happens. Uh, hit that like and subscribe button. We'll do more examples in class, and I'll see you in the next video.